Um, okay, so why don't we jump in since uh, the clock has started. Uh, I'm so delighted that uh, we're doing this uh, panel. In the beginning, if you see on the schedule, it's uh, Matt Bonser uh, from uh, PwC. It's Joseph Levine uh, from Deloitte, who was uh, with us in London. It's uh, Jeff Roberts from ENY and Michael Wolf from KPMG. So, uh, with uh, two people who love this topic uh, perhaps the most. And uh, so Sam Guckenheimer uh, and uh, Topo Pal. And I'll leave attribution off uh, just in case that causes some issues. But why don't we uh, have each one of you introduce yourself um, and we'll talk about uh, desired outcomes uh, for this hour. Sure. So I'm Sam Guckenheimer. Um, uh, you might know me, uh, and I'll I'll share the attribution. I've been at Microsoft uh, for 16 years or so, uh, working on uh, what's now Azure DevOps, and have been passionate about uh, bringing uh, audit, compliance, governance, security into our DevOps practices because I think the way uh, these things are disconnected and are handled today is pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, spoken in your blunt um, and endearing normal way. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Topo, Dr. Uh, Pal. I, yes, my name is Topo Pal. Uh, I have been DevOps and CPS for a while, and one of my passion is, as Sam said, uh, bringing in audit compliance, uh, IT governance, and security into DevOps. Uh, and I think, uh, yes, uh, not as strong as what Sam's feel, uh, feeling is, but I think overall it's uh, 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 pretty green at this point that uh, we need to have a lot of work done around it. <laughs> well, so to speak very concretely, um, so up um, at the DevOps Enterprise Summit, uh, we have this incredible opportunity where we're actually having all big four auditors uh, in a plenary session. Um, uh, essentially doing myth busting about how you know you can or can't do DevOps uh, safely, securely, in a way that can be audited and being compliant. Uh, so uh, we have, a, uh, and this is not the comp this is not the comp consulting side. This is actually the audit side, right? The attest assurance functions. Um, and so I, th I thought maybe uh, uh, this was a result of. Sam and Topo, your tireless work trying to mobilize this community and using every relationship we had to help make this happen. Yes, um, <laughs> uh, a big time uh, thanks goes to you because you have been kind of mediating this because <laughs> Uh, you, you know, everybody knows you and you know everybody in the world, so. <laughs> no, 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 actually it's, uh, I mean, I think uh, when you look at the big four, right, I mean, I think we all have our names on uh, one or two of them that they really did take a collective effort to bring them to the table. Um, before we go into this, uh, what should be a landmark event for the industry, uh, uh, this was actually a partly a byproduct of uh, an experiment we did in London earlier this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Topo, you were the one who uh, masterminded and shepherded that effort. Can you talk about uh, what it was and uh, what you got out of it and uh, why you thought it was valuable? Uh, yes, and even prior to that, you know, you know, since 2015, uh, you know, in DevOps Enterprise Forum, we had this specific topic always come up as one of the highest priority. How do I do DevOps and be compliant at the same time? Uh, you know, it kind of ranged from uh, uh, separation of duties or segregation of duties to how to bring security and we wrote papers and then we wrote another paper and then it turned out to be a love letter to the auditor <laughs> because we realized that unless we reach out to them and they reach out to us, this is not going to happen. So that was the main reason why in London we said that let's get everybody together on the stage. At least we can start from there uh, to have the open discussion. And uh, as I said, you know, unless you ask the right question face to face and kind of uh, going back to my love letter, which was kind of an olive <laughs> on side, uh, this thing is not going to happen. So I was so excited about that event uh, that uh, it created a platform for uh, people like us who are developers and who want to ship code to production as fast as possible. And we want to be compliant at the same time, except that we really don't know how to do that. So I we kind of, <laughs> need their help and their guidance and i was very impressed that they actually came forward uh, for our you know for helping us uh, and uh, the the whole uh, event was actually you can ask the auditor anything oh that's great yes <laughs> yeah. except that you don't introduce yourself <laughs> meaning that it doesn't matter which uh, organizations or enterprise you come from the question really matters 
and you asking the question should not be an impact on you uh, in any form or fashion. So it's like a free discussion. Yeah, no, that was great. In fact, I mean, we got a lot of advice from, uh, this was Joseph Levine and the, his uh, colleagues from uh, Deloitte gave a lot of great uh, advice on how to structure it so that uh, we could preserve anonymity, not get anyone in trouble. And there are certain conditions where if you, if you, if they learn something, <laughs> they do have to have report it. So just kind of coaching us on how to do that. I thought that was great. Uh, Sam, I actually forgot uh, that how far back this mission has gone. It's like four plus years we've been working on like security compliance to an audit, accept audit. Uh, Sam, you want to tell us about that journey? Yeah, sure. Well, so um, I've been um, saying that, uh, you know, we as a tech company think that compliance is something we ought to uh, define with policy as code, that we ought to enforce it, uh, you know, starting with a pull request, enforce it in the pipeline, enforce it at deployment. Uh, and evidence is something we ought to, we for ourselves uh, do collect as a, a result of automation so that we can fulfill our own compliance audits. If you look at what we do in the cloud, we have, you know, 90 some <laughs> compliance certificates we have to do for all of these different jurisdictions. Um, it's kind of mind numbing. And uh, we're in an org where we're a company where we're doing 85,000 deployments a day. So the idea that you're gonna get there by inspecting an instance of deployment uh, and you know validating that everything in that instance is, uh, is right for <laughs> the compliances is, is uh, mathematically impossible. So, right, I mean, print it out, staple it, put it in a three ring binder, <laughs> and show right, it to the auditors. Right, right. Mm. You, would, you would literally have millions of binders <laughs> for every annual cycle. And um, uh, they won't do anyone any good. So the, uh, the notion that we needed to, to, to move forward has been pretty clear. And, and actually the, you know, both the auditors and, and the uh, advisors we work with seem to get it. But then I had a really strong insight from Topo uh, at, uh, I think this was two years ago, maybe three years ago, where um, uh, Topo said to me, yeah, but what do I tell my internal auditor? How am I gonna tell them that this has a big four stamp of approval that we can actually do this. And I thought, huh, you're right. It's not enough for us geeks to say, hey, we can automate this. It has to be uh, something where the uh, body that gives you the opinion with a signature says, hmm. yeah, of course you want to do that. Of course you want to um, inspect the factory line, not the widget. Um, of course that's the right way to, to move forward. And um, interestingly, most all of the big four uh, auditors I talked to said, yeah, makes sense to <laughs> us. And so I thought, huh. Let's get this to happen publicly. <laughs> right. And so the, the, I think we had a brainstorming call. Uh, it must have been early this year uh, where it kind of led to this audacious vision. Is like, could we get every a representative from each of the big four auditors there? And we compared Rolodexes and compared audit firms. <laughs> that were auditing. Yeah. And then uh, there, was a, there was a glimmer of hope. And uh, uh, suddenly the email introduction started to come in. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I as Sam was saying, right, you know, uh, everybody agrees that this is a great idea. It can be automated and data can be presented and all that. But when it actually goes back to the actual audit process, it goes back to the same old quote unquote book that's been followed for years. Yeah. So essentially one of the, you know, one of the auditors uh, uh, who are going to join us for the, for the workshop told me personally that somebody has to rewrite that book. Yeah. But 
Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's called the International Professional Practices Framework. Uh, in fact, it was, it's called the Red Book. Uh, <laughs> and it typically comes from the Institute of Internal Auditors. And uh, it's, it's funny, so I didn't know this. Um, so back when SOX 404 was first passed, uh, uh, we actually worked on a chapter to kind of insert that. So, wow, we should uh, assemble a working group to uh, see if we can actually rewrite a very specific chapter about intro controls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I think it was further than that, Gene, because you know you get to uh, regulated industries, and you know if it's banking, you've got the FFIEC. If it's yeah. um, uh, medical, you've got twenty one CFR for the FDA. Uh, if it's automotive, you've got. <laughs> ISO 26262, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and all of these things are very similar. They all basically, uh, you know, they have a set of controls. They have uh, evidence that they look for. They uh, assume that you can, you know, produce the evidence that maps to the controls and uh, th this will then take you back to, to uh, being able to check all of the boxes. And the missing piece has been uh, making our uh, engineering process one so that the compliance gets built in. Yeah. And uh, I think we're we're now at a point as an industry where we, you know, have kind of gotten to consensus of necessity because mm. it doesn't <clears throat> notion of producing a million binders a year that get, <laughs> that will not get looked at is uh, widely regarded <laughs> as waste. And we'd rather preserve those trees and uh, it just um, uh, uh, the it's a waste. environment's yeah. changed. Yeah, untenable. Yeah, so um, let's talk about what the uh, – oh, and by the way, maybe I'll just make this observation. So uh, in London, Topo, I thought it was phenomenal to actually meet the, uh, the team from Deloitte, uh, which actually were springboarding upon to make this event happen. Uh, so these were the people who uh, were – professional auditors, not, uh, one, in some cases not technology, in some cases uh, come from a technology background. Uh, they're boundary spanners. And what I loved about it is that um, they were using as a uh, evidence point is kind of all the internal applications they use as part of the audit practice to serve the people in the field doing attest assurance work. So if, right. if their customers are relying on the work of Deloitte, they are in turn relying on the work of applications being where they're using DevOps principles and practices. I thought that was such a powerful and yes. so persuasive. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, uh, if we can rely upon their things that are kind of gone through this kind of new process, why can't ours? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if we can, then you must, you know, yeah, if we yeah. can, then you better be as well. Yeah. Uh, actually, there was uh, something else that they said is that, uh, we are using DevOps because it will make sure that we can stay in business and mm -hmm. we need our customers to also use DevOps so that they can stay in business. <laughs> right. right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I think that that's why this, uh, this particular event that we're gonna have in, in Las Vegas is very really, uh, important. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and uh, we really, as I said before, we really need an open discussion because everybody is convinced mentally, it just needs to be formalized. Nice. Well, so let's talk about concretely uh, what is going to happen in Vegas. So we have three sessions set up. Uh, we have a plenary session, which basically means that everyone uh, who comes to DevOps Enterprise will see it, whether they want to or not, <laughs> because we think it's that important. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have a ask the auditor anything that will happen uh, in a track. And... Uh, I think just to make the room for all the follow-up discussions, we're making another ask the other or anything. Um, so do you want to talk about any of your kind of hopes, aspirations, goals uh, going into the, uh, uh, into the conference for these activities? Kind of what would make you say, oh, I'm so glad that we did this because it did X, Y, and Z. Yes, and I think to start with, we should follow the same norm uh, that uh, the, uh, the camera, the recording camera just focused us on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, no attendee's face uh, <laughs> is taken on the camera, 
and then one rule uh, uh, is kind of the, the ground rule when you stand up and ask a question you can ask whatever you want as a developer to an auditor right. the only requirement is that you don't introduce yourself and you don't tell where you are from right uh, we're not going to we are not going to modify your voice <laughs> <laughs> Right. So this is for the ask the auditor anything. This is in the uh, uh, after the plenary session. Right. right. Uh -huh. So uh, in the plenary session, I think uh, uh, Jean, you know, I think they are going to present their uh, DevOps practices and how they think that the, the, their DevOps practice is evolving with yeah. respect to the audit compliance. Right, and uh, the the top myths that uh, they will um, mm -hmm. uh, bust. And uh, Sam, your idea, which. Uh, I think it's going to uh, be full is fully embraced was everyone's going to be up there uh, with their polo shirt with their uh, company logo on it. <laughs> and we'll have that photo moment. Uh, right, Sam? Absolutely. So I want on YouTube, the big four identifiable with their logos, <laughs> all saying yes. And for me, the success um, at the the conference is twofold. First of all, I want anyone who is at the conference who believes they are facing resistance at home to moving toward uh, an automated uh, compliant DevOps model to be able to walk away with a business card from a big four representative <laughs> Said, who has said, I will back you up in this conversation. And then I want the non-attendees to be able to go to YouTube yeah. and use the recording of the session to say, hey, that applies to us too. And to be able to, to take the YouTube recording as a virtual business card to force the discussion at home. Yeah. And I, I believe that, that every hour people spend manually collecting <laughs> evidence that could be created <laughs> is a wasted hour. And I want to give them their lives back. <laughs> uh, and by the way, <laughs> just to say this explicitly, I think one of the most interesting things that has uh, or, and surprising kind of use cases for the YouTube videos is how often, and, and often this is because of you, Topo, is that because you bring the director of internal audit, because you, have, uh, because you bring, uh, you know, people are bringing their business colleagues, often uh, people are using it as the basis of a meeting, <laughs> saying, uh, hey, we have a monthly one-on-one, we're gonna spend the first 30 minutes watching a video together, <laughs> yeah. and then we're gonna have a discussion about uh, you know, how this might have implications for the way we do work. Uh, I, I think that's been really powerful. I, I love the vision that you set. Uh, Topo, do you have any, uh, uh, what, what's your reaction to that vision that Sam painted? Yeah, I, I think what Sam is saying is exactly the thing that we want, that the big four with the logo and the nice video at the virtual business card is kind of attestation to what we have been saying, that, that, that you know, the new world is really better than the old world and everybody <laughs> agrees to that. The next step would be how do you go to that that direction, right? From an individual enterprise perspective, or as a group, or as a collection of industry. Uh, however, that works out, we don't know yet. But I think this is the start. Uh huh. Um, uh, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, so, uh, so I had asked Topo kind of like uh, what he's uh, looking forward to. Uh, Sam, I asked you uh, what you're uh, looking for. I, I, are there specific uh, questions or challenges that uh, are on your must ask list uh, that, that kind of burning the most burning things that you want on record uh, there's so many <laughs> go ahead <laughs> Sam, Sam go ahead well I was going to say for me it starts with the auditors and that'll take care of uh, what we need to do for our you know regular company public company audit and typically for SOX 404. Um, and I'm hoping that we create a, a snowball turning into an avalanche, then move the various regulators uh, mm -hmm. in vertical industries in the same direction. Uh, so mm -hmm. right now, 
uh, we're getting the big four first, and we're going to talk about, you know, financial controls and public companies and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, the, I, I believe we will be successful with that. And I, I sincerely hope that the next step is that we can start to influence all of these vertical industry bodies in terms of how they think about uh, their compliance standards and the compliance practices they require. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another side to it too. Uh, uh, at least this is my realization that most of the development community really don't understand what auditors do and mm -hmm. where do they come from and why they're there. And I think that aspect is, uh, or that side of the story is also very important in terms of developers education as to why it is important that they do the things that they do, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it opens up that kind of open discussion. And as a developer, when I actually started speaking to the auditors, I started realizing many things that I didn't know mm -hmm. before. Uh, and, and it kind of adds on to the whole experience itself. And uh, it kind of mellows down some of these discussions, uh, hostile <laughs> discussions that we sometimes have in the development community. Oh, auditors say that and all that. <laughs> there is a reason behind that too. Uh, I think uh, with big force on the stage explaining things the way they do will also help the development community or the DevOps community in general, uh, realizing that there is an importance of audit in the whole journey itself. Uh, yeah, in fact, by the way, I'm going back to London. In, in the show notes, uh, we'll put out the uh, video of uh, the two sessions that we did in London, so June 2019. Uh, one of the things that uh, I was furiously taking notes on was the fact that uh, you know, when they look at the internal applications that serve uh, the audit uh, division, uh, how much training they're doing of the, of the developers. <laughs> and uh, that was actually a bit of a, that was very startling to me, just to your point. It was, uh, they are teaching developers um, the control objectives and uh, uh, going to great lengths to make sure that they know what the rules are or what the, mm -hmm. the intent of the rules are. Uh, right. I thought that was a, a dazzling thing that they shared. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I would love it to, so I would love to get to a world where the intent is what we train on. Yeah. And the rules are more automated. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I am not at all uh, a, uh, Lazy, fair, anti-regulation guy. <laughs> Regulation is good. When I uh, go to the doctor and you know, like stick my head in the MRI machine, I am glad that the FDA has certified this medical device. You know, when I um, uh, drive on the road, <laughs> I am glad that cars are certified for for roadworthiness and all that kind of stuff. However. When I visit the customers who make these things and I observe the things that they do, the, the processes that they go through with the statement, we have to do this because we can't get regulatory approval unless we do, da, 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 da. And I see, see what, what they're doing, it's it like, uh, it makes me scream <laughs> because I don't actually think the current manual processes most people do uh, make medical equipment or cars safer. I think that they make innovation slower. And um, I would just love to see a sea change in attitude. Yeah. Um, by the way, as of... Uh, so we have, we talked about three things. We're going to have the plenary session where we're going to have a representative from each of the big four. And so the structure of that will be really um, marching through the top myths that uh, we just want them to declare, everyone to declare that, yeah, that's a myth, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then we have, uh, let's call it Ask an Auditor Anything, session number one, uh, which will yeah. be moderated by uh, the illustrious panel here, Sam Guggenheimer and Topa Powell. Um, and so you'll be helping moderate those sessions. And then we're going to have the third one, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think the current plan is uh, basically have each one of the big four kind of set up a camp in each of the corners and mm -hmm. then uh, they can field whatever questions and it's really up to the attendee to find kind of the expertise they want. Um, 
Yeah, Sam, do you think that's kind of the uh, format helps achieve those outcomes that you were looking for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we wanted to we wanted the plenary session to get across to everyone. Hey, if you're in a public company or a regulated company or you're a supplier to one of these, this affects you. Yeah. And then we wanted to get the ask me anything so that uh, uh, you have a chance anonymously to say, to ask a, a rude <laughs> question to the effect of, I've been told blah, 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 blah is necessary. <laughs> is that really true? Um, yeah. And then we wanted. Oh, with, with you and Sam to really help make sure that, you know, we really press yeah. for uh, the clarity that we seek, right? <laughs> yes. Something like when Sam said, oh, I was told I'm supposed to do blah, blah, blah. I can fill in the gap saying that I am told that developers <laughs> are not supposed to have access to the Jenkins blog. Is that true? <laughs> you know, it can be even that did that. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. I mean, the you know, the, the, um, uh, I certainly care about how you lock down your pipelines, and I certainly care about how we automate the right checks in the pipelines, and I care that the pipelines collect evidence automatically. No kidding. Um, does that mean that you uh, can't make the pipeline fast? <laughs> does that mean that you can't get feedback to the developer in a few minutes from the pipeline? <laughs> Absolutely not. And right. Um, you know, and if you structure things properly, then you can you can create a genuine DevOps cycle for fast feedback to the engineers and make it compliant and make it secure and make it self-documenting for audit evidence. Right. And if you do that, you can eliminate a whole bunch of kabuki that goes on right mm -hmm. now that is wasting everyone's time. Yeah. So I that's, John, uh, that's uh, session number two. Oh, sorry. John Willis has a term for it. Uh, uh, it's called Compliance Circus. I, I, I think he called out in one of his uh, <laughs> talks at, at one of the conferences. Uh, he calls it Compliance Circus. <laughs> right. Or Compliance Theater. Yes, yes. Uh, right. So that's, uh, that's the kind of the, the format of the, uh, the, the smaller panel, or I'm sorry, the uh, more intimate panel. And then, uh, Sam, to your th the third structure, that kind of like... Uh, uh, the more one-on-one -on -one discussions or the yeah, smaller Yeah, so I want any attendee, I want any attendee to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with either their audit firm or uh, the firm they use in an advisory capacity for internal audit. And from that conversation to be able to say, ah, hmm. I have an authority now and I have their business card and I can take this home and I can say, you know, we could do this better. Yeah. No, that's or so you, great. Oh, sorry, Sam. Or, uh, that's or, or even, you know, if I'm an attendee and I go with this one of one session, knowing that one of the big fours are one of our auditors, and I can go and ask them that, hey, yeah. I have to I've been told by our internal audit that this is what needs to happen. What do you say about that? Yeah. You know. Is it really right? Is it coming from you? And then, you know, depending upon the answer, I will go back to my internal auditor, auditor with the business card, say, hey, can you talk to this person? Yeah. Because that's what he told me. Yeah. <laughs> so it can, it can have a, a far reach into uh, the whole discussion. Yeah, that's, that's so great. And I think um, like so many things on this uh, DevOps enterprise journey, it's, it's so exciting for me personally uh, to actually meet some of these kindred spirits in the audit firms. I mean, there's no doubt talking to the people at the, uh, that we met in at Deloitte in London, Topo, yeah. that you know, they're one of us, right? I mean, they see the same yeah, yeah. dead bodies as we do. <laughs> and uh, uh, to be able to learn the language and uh, have the right friends to be able to constructively engage on that uh, has been uh, just incredibly rewarding uh, to me. You're our auditor. They do it that way. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that, Sam? They, they audit Microsoft. Oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. They give us those 90-some opinion letters. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. It required for any public company, not to mention the world's most valuable company. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, my apologies. I, have, I feel like I should have done this uh, earlier. So for the uh, panel in the beginning, if you see on the schedule, it's uh, Matt Bonser uh, from 
uh, PwC, it's Joseph Levine uh, from Deloitte who was uh, with us in London, it's uh, Jeff Roberts from ENY and Michael Wolf from KPMG. So <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's really great. Um, so I guess the uh, last thing I'd want to uh, ask about is, um, uh, uh, what, what do you think are the um, attendee, so we made a uh, decision to have this in the plenary track or in the plenary session, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's required for everybody. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, 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 tell me why you think it's that important. Uh, Topo, why don't we start with you? Uh, so first of all, you know, everybody attends that, that plenary session. Mm -hmm early in the morning uh, or until the, the, the you know, early morning break. Yeah. Uh, so everybody's in the room, everybody's hearing the same thing that these people are saying one after the other. And I think it, it's a big impact because it's not hearsay anymore, it's what, which is what we heard as, as, a, as a DevOps community. And they were on the stage with Jim Kim. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it has it has a good impact, and I think uh, over the years I have noticed that in DevOps Enterprise Summit, not only the DevOps practitioners but also other associated IT team they actually come to the conference, and I think it's very important that they come and now they are getting a chance to hear some of the things that are not really coding development, <laughs> all those things oriented, but also not. Uh, not uh, like uh, uh, it is very important in the yeah. overall production system, if you will. Right? So yeah. I think, uh, it, it gives a lot of value for everyone. Yeah, that's, that's really great, Sam. Yeah, why why the plenary? Well, if you're in a public company, if you're in a regulated company, if you are a startup supplying B two B to one of those as you, as your customer and you do not get your audit, you don't stay in business. <laughs> and so this affects you and it, it oozes <laughs> into the company culture in either a healthy or an unhealthy way. And I'd much rather have, you know, a symbiote than a parasite. <laughs> in the company culture <laughs> and you know it if you're in a um b2c startup you may not be thinking about this but if you hope to get acquired someday or you hope <laughs> to go public someday it's gonna affect you and it's gonna hit you like a freight train so being able to take into account a modern way of working is important for everyone and we've been you know we we've been kind of quiet about this in the past yeah it's a secret right i mean <laughs> you know what happens is the um uh the old patterns come in and they they feel parasitic hmm. and um no one's happy you know the the engineers aren't happy it's like you know well, why are you putting all this tax on me? Yeah. And you know, the um, uh, engineering managers are like, oh my God, we got all these pipelines, don't know what they do. How can we trust them? You know, how do we inspect them? Everyone's, you know, stop the train. We need to review our pipelines. And then you get, you get the business owners saying, how are we gonna get, you know, SOC 2 compliance or, you know, FUBAR certification and, uh, <laughs> everyone is terrified of it and the auditors don't like it either. Yeah. No one likes it. So let's fix yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I think what I, uh, maybe just to pile on to there, I mean, I think it is, uh, it was, it was, I still remember this decision that we made in the uh, program committee. It's like, you know, where does this belong? Is it in a track or is it in the plenary session? I think the decision we came up with was no, this rises to the importance that everyone needs to see it, whether they think they need to or not, <laughs> right? As, as Sam stated so eloquently, right? If you're part of a large complex organization that's publicly traded in a regulated industry, which is almost everybody, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, any technology leader uh, needs to know this. Um, and I think it's, uh, this is a community full of boundary spanners. They're the ones who cross the dev and ops divide. You know, here's one more boundary that they need to span and become expert in. Uh, yeah. 
and, and 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 another way to look at it is you know I personally have seen three states in this journey with or without the auditor one is number one auditors told us you cannot do this so we didn't do this so that's first stage we could not do devops because our audit didn't allow it Hmm. So that's stage one. Stage two <laughs> is we went into it and then you got stuck at some point because <laughs> to cross that next step, audit is not allowing. The third is kind of uh, very sad, which is we did it all the way and then we got dinged. <laughs> so, so I think for uh, irrespective of which stage you are in, in your DevOps journey, it's important to you uh, for you to talk to the auditors. And I think this is one of the... Uh, one of the ways that we can actually <laughs> right, go talk to the auditors before they come looking for you. <laughs> it's probably a, always a great strategy. Well, um, how about uh, you both? Do you have any other thoughts or questions or uh, aspirations that you want to share uh, before we conclude? Sam, go first. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I want to do a shout out to Eugene because I think DevOps Enterprise Summit is uh, one of the uh, most uh, informative and fun events of the annual calendar. Um, I always have great uh, discussions in the lobby, in the hallway. Um, I've found the, the quality of community and engagement there fantastic. And I think that the, uh, the, a lot of the momentum that we see around uh, the changes in industry practice come out of the discussions among the people who are there. So this is really a great place to land the next step in uh, making DevOps the new normal for all of the mm -hmm. industry. And uh, absolutely. And I kind of uh, can continue on the same thread and, you know, big thanks to Jim Kim. Or no. this kind of event, because all the other conferences that I go to are about how to set up pipelines, how to fine tune your stuff, how to stand up a, doc, uh, a Kubernetes cluster, and all that. Those are important, but equally important is uh, the, the the whole theme of this DevOps Enterprise and Conference, which is there are other pains in the big enterprises, and mm -hmm. we we'll talk about those pains, and not only talk about the pains uh, or successes through the pains. We also talk about failures, so that we can learn from the failures. So I think this is uh, immensely useful, at least for me personally. Oh my goodness! Well, uh, my equal gratitude to you both, uh, Topo. You've been uh, from the very beginning in 2014, and Sam, same to you. Uh, so I'm profoundly grateful for everything you've done to help uh, advance uh, all these aspirations of the community. Well, uh, so the uh, DevOps Enterprise is a week and a half from now. It is October 28th to the 30th uh, in Las Vegas, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, an amazing conference. Uh, just uh, to share something personal, uh, kind of within the program committee, our goal is always to outprogram the, the last one. And so for four conferences in a row, uh, you know, I think we've exceeded and outprogrammed the previous one, which gets a little frightening. <laughs> but I genuinely believe that uh, you know, this is going to be the best uh, conference ever, and just as measured by how much I'm going to learn from it. And I certainly have the highest hopes and um, amount of excitement for what I think is going to be an amazing industry. Uh, uh, seminal moment, right? To have uh, the big four be able to uh, state that DevOps is safe, the water is great, and you need to get in <laughs> because yeah. it's dangerous not to. So again, my thanks for the two of you for uh, helping make that happen.